I'm so excited with the conversation we had today with Amanda and Greta, um, two engineering Stanford classmates who are elite athletes who created the new tampon. I am just amazed, and I can tell you're over the moon, especially with your ties to Stanford in general. But think about these two young women who are engineers, which in and of itself is a massive feat, but you know, really elite athletes, and then coming up with a tampon to solve their own concerns. They don't want the red line event occurring in their white uniforms. And I can't tell you that I hear this type of thing in my practice day in and day out. And it's so amazing to think about that moment they described. You're about to get onto the field or into the pool or on the beam or whatever your your sport is. And in addition to worrying about the technical aspects and the performance and did you practice enough, you have to worry if on national TV or maybe international TV, you're going to leak through your leak. tampon. It's really a case of necessity being the mother of, of invention. They, they yeah. saw this, they needed it, and they came up with it. And what I like is so often female entrepreneurs are told, oh, this is just you know your problem. But this is clearly... A problem. One out of every two people on the planet are menstruating um, at some point. Uh, and it's just amazing to have another option. We've seen a number of new innovations. So we've seen the direct delivery distribution and the ability to create your own, you know, your own flow or your own package of what you think. So and different materials. There are things that have changed, but what's unique based on what I understand they described is the way that the fluid is absorbed on the tampon itself. Yeah, and they've been very thoughtful about the ingredients they've chosen to make their products. So let's go ahead and speak to Amanda and Greta and hear all about SQL. Welcome to the business of the V. Hello, friends and colleagues. I'm Dr. Alyssa Dweck. And I'm Rachel Braunschirl. Each week, we bring you the most fascinating investors, inventors, entrepreneurs, academics, and healthcare practitioners who are making things happen in women's sexual and reproductive health. If you are a woman, know a woman, have a business, or care about your V health and wellness, fasten your seatbelts and listen in to another informative and inspiring episode. We are so excited to speak to the two co-founders of SQL, Amanda Calabrese and Greta Meyer, who have created sort of the latest, greatest, best, exciting new tampon that we've seen in the market in a long time. And we can't even begin this conversation without you telling us about what your inspiration was, your, your personal experiences as women and as really, really uh, amazing athletes. Yeah, so you'll be shocked or maybe not shocked to know that the tampon has not been redesigned in over 80 years. And that was very shocking to Greta and I. We were Stanford students in mechanical engineering in the product design department. Uh, but before that, we were high level, uh, high level athletes, myself competing all over the world for the U.S. life-saving team. I was on Team USA for almost 10 years. And Greta was a division one recruited athlete to Stanford's lacrosse team. And we had always struggled with period care in our most critical moments. I'm wearing a red, white, and blue bathing suit representing my country. And I'm worrying about, is my product going to be failing me when I'm running out of the water? And Greta has these stories of being in the locker room and her teammates being like, hey, can you check me? Can you make sure that my crisp white home team Stanford uniform does not have a red stain on the back of it while I'm running down the field trying to score a goal. Uh, and that was really the inspiration for why we started SQL. We were looking at the market. We couldn't really find any options that worked for us and for, again, for our critical moments. And so we wanted to create something that was going to fill that void that we had. And upon speaking with hundreds of other, you know, Stanford students, our moms, our mom's friends, uh, women 
that we knew used used period products very regularly, they had the same problems as we did. I hear this in my practice day in and day out. I take care of a lot of college athletes, a lot of just regular women who literally stop their exercise routine during that time of month because they're afraid of exactly what you're speaking of. So tell us, especially with your engineering background, how did you come up with the new design and tell us about the design, of course. Yeah, so this one is really, I mean, it is, I think we're really lucky that it is very visual, right? When you have that leakage event, uh, we actually named that the red line effect. So if you can imagine a tampon, it starts out being white. Um, what we noticed is that all the tampons on the market had the, this very same feature, which was an uninterrupted linear channel. So, and those were around the tampon. What we noticed was that was actually kind of effectively funneling the fluid away from the absorbent fibers of that tampon resulting in premature leakage or what we called the red line effect. So one red line down the side, what we've done is interrupt that linear flow path with a helical channel. So essentially encouraging the fluid to flow around the circumference of the tampon instead of straight down the side. Um, and that was really the initial idea. Obviously our drawings and, and patents have evolved since the very first one, but um, the, the fundamental kind of science and approach has been identical. Yeah, I can completely appreciate this. What my patients will also complain of is if they have a clot of any size, that it sort of blocks the passage of fluid. So does your tampon allow for, for that to be mitigated? Yeah, clots are really interesting. It's obviously different for every woman. Um, I think what, what we have also centered around is that the it's kind of like the plurality of flow paths. So instead of just one channel, it's there's all of these intersections and different ways for it to flow around. And I think that's been really important. Something another benefit for us that we've seen is an increase in comfort based on a lack of dryness. So if you think about just the red line effect being the most extreme of, okay, maybe 70% of the tampon is dry, that's going to make for a really uncomfortable removal process. But yeah. in, in that scenario where you then have a, a even distribution of fluid, you'll, you'll get a, a more comfortable experience. Tell us how you came up with the actual, um, types of fibers and materials that you're using in your tampon, because it really looks very unique compared to, you know, everything else that's been out there for the past 80 years, right? And timing is everything. Obviously, the story recently um, spread like wildfire that uh, many tampons were tested and they appear to have varying degrees of metals in them. Yeah, and, and Greta is absolutely the expert here. We're so lucky to have like two sides of the team here where I definitely lean more into, you know, the the personification of the brand and and really getting it out in the hands of the most extreme users, female athletes, but also, you know, our our Pilates and our yoga morning warriors. Um, but you know, I just want to say that we have done extensive research on the supply chain, not just because it matters, but because it's exciting to enter an industry that has systemic monopolies all the way throughout the supply chain. And we've been so lucky to have the opportunities to, you know, be at a cotton farm in Mariana, Arkansas, all the way through to visiting one of the viscose uh, processing plants um, overseas. And so we've had both of those experiences. We very uniquely understand how the supply chain works for the available fibers on the market. But obviously, again, Greta is the expert on all things in this area. So pass that off to her. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we, like Amanda said, we we have done this kind of research and and listened to a lot of information and misinformation about different fiber choices over the years. So I think we felt like, okay, this is, you know, it's always a little bit double-edged. I think we we really respect the work of Dr. Jen Gunter, who puts out a lot of research and and a lot of clarifying facts sometimes during a lot of the chaos that results in some of these TikTok videos. Um, so I feel like we we really appreciate the discussion coming up. It, all in all, I think it was slightly misleading in some aspects, but at the same time, we're all for more testing, um, more safety, more transparency coming for brands from brands. Um, and I think that's definitely a result of this recent chapter as well. 
And there's yeah. very, it's surprising to people that there's no regulations in many states. Um, you have to know what's in your cereal box, but you don't necessarily, as a manufacturer, have to reveal the ingredients, if you will, um, the materials in your menstrual products. So there's so much here. I have a Stanford connection. I wasn't an athlete. I went to the business school. I raised two college athletes. I'm obsessed with the Olympics. So I want to hear you guys came out of the gate, you know, with a lot of terrific press, probably because of the combination of things that you bring. Tell us about the program that you ran at the Olympics, how you came up with that idea, and what was the result in terms of, you know, the business, the experience, the understanding of customers? Yeah, I mean, we are building this product for, or we're building it for us when we were athletes and when we were competing, and we wish we had these products on game day. So obviously being in Paris at the end of July, early August could not be a more wonderful opportunity for our initial kind of entry into the market. 2024 is the year of women's sports. I think there's no debate about that. Um, we couldn't be more excited to be launching in 2024 because it aligns so much of, of again, what we want to build. We see such a white space in the market for speaking directly to women that are active, that are moving their bodies. And like, I don't care if you're pushing your stroller down the street or you're competing at the mm -hmm. Olympics, like you're moving your body, you are getting out there and you are active and our tampons for you. Um, but Paris for, for two How weeks. How did you create the relationship, sort of the genesis and who'd you call? We're a new tampon brand. Hello, <laughs> U.S. Olympic gymnastics team. Yeah. So we actually, so we are partnered with Athleta. Um, Athleta is, is just a perfect brand alignment for us. They really focus on premium products for young girls and women, and they're all about movement. Um, and so they had an activation that was in Paris in in uh, end of September, early, or sorry, end of July, early August. Um, we were able to have the opportunity to sample with them to get product to, you know, some of the amazing individuals that are in their orbit. Um, and we were able to put our brand alongside their brand at some of the biggest two weeks of sport, I mean, until the next one comes around, right? And so the ability to sample, be in those spaces, have SQL take up that space and have, you know, even just our logo next to their logo is so significant for us being such a small brand and an athlete is such a, a right legacy. Right to the top player. of the, the ath ath athleisure food chain. That's amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm curious, how well did SQL uh, hold up to the sand? I mean, I'm sure you went swimming, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you? you know, I heard a little rumor that you weren't allowed to swim in the Seine. Like the public isn't, it's not open to the public until next year. Um, but there was some plotting and scheming. We were like, you know, could we do it? Could we jump in there? Um, but yeah, I, uh, I, I do don't have any conclusive results for you on how it stood up to the Seine, but I will if say. I tell you, uh, in 30 years of practice, I get asked very regularly, can I swim with a tampon? Yeah. So you, you need to get that on your blog for sure. I mean, you know what? I was an ocean lifeguard for many years in New York. I still swim almost every day. I'm a surfer. I competed for the U.S. National Lifeguarding Team. I wear our tampons and I'm in and out of the water all day. So I hope that's enough of a kind of recommendation. <laughs> I like Where the are you in terms of commercialization? Where is it available? When will it be available more broadly? You know, and I also would be really interested to know from the germ of the idea um, to the launch of the business, how long that was. Because it sounds, you know, Stanford and we're creating billion dollar businesses in our garages and we're athletes. It all sounds like it's, it's made for central casting and this is going to be a great movie. Um, when these tampons take over the world. So talk a little bit about that process. We'll probably say the same thing. Um, from the from the very start, so we were, it was December of 2018, as crazy as that sounds. Um, and then what we were students for the following, basically two more quarters of school. So it was 2019. We had, we graduated 2019 in May, June, June. And then we started working on this over the summer and then actually kind of really committed to raising funding, starting the R&D process at the end of that summer in 2019. So 
I think that that's really, it's, it was kind of a, not a jump off the cliff start, but um, we were able to work on it. Also as students it was amazing to have great resources around us. And so that that's definitely a recommendation for people starting businesses as students take advantage of those. Um, and now we're, we're several years later, uh, we're through the FDA, which I think was, a uh, an amazing learning process as well. And we fully scaled our manufacturing, um, but you can purchase our products right now. We have a regular absorbency that's available on our website, trysequel.com. Um, you can also subscribe to that product to have it arrive um, on a, a regular cadence. And yeah, we're looking forward to be releasing new products shortly as well. Amazing. How difficult was it to navigate the FDA? Did you get grandfathered in because there's so many other tampons around or, or did you have to kind of start novelly? Yeah. I mean, I think for us, we really thought about it as an asset and as a, it's not only a hurdle, but then once you're past that hurdle, it's a moat. Um, so for us, it was really important to own that clearance as an asset for us. So which, which meant, you know, we're a new company, we had to go through the FDA on our own. So there really was no grandfathering in, unfortunately, um, that definitely made it, you know, we, we had to prove from the start, okay, this material is safe. Um, this product is safe and effective as a whole. It is a, it's a pretty opaque process as mm -hmm. even though they do a lot to try to make it very clear, I think as, as neither of us had ever done that before. So a lot of gathering resources and help from consultants and regulatory experts who had been through the process before. Um, and that's, I think we, we are really proud of our, the fact that our company is through that. It's a huge milestone. And once you do have a clearance, it makes it, you know, you have a relationship with the FDA. You also have an established safety line. Obviously ours is, is short at this point, but I think that's one benefit of, you know, being in the industry, then you can develop more products. So here's today's hot flash. In a UK survey, 78% of young women who wanted to engage athletically said they avoided sport when they had their period. And just what so about, people understand oh, that the yeah. tampon goes through a process that's called a 510K. Um, so a tampon is regulated as a class two medical device. And I would imagine in this case, correct me if I'm wrong, that there's something, the, the FDA version of being grandfathered in is a predicate device. So if there is an existing device that serves the same purpose or is similar enough, you can rest some of your safety data on a tampon that's been approved before. Uh, was that what your process was? Yeah, so our process it is five ten k, which as you're you're saying exactly right, Rachel. There there is a predicate. It's not our product, so that's where there's not necessarily a grandfather. But you're absolutely right. Is that there are tampons, so it's not a, you know, a new. There's de novo PMA that are pathways for things that don't have something that comes before it. We went through significant microbiology, biocompatibility, cytotox sensitization, a lot of this testing to really prove. Okay our product doesn't change any existing safety or efficacy data. And I think that's where it, it is for us. I think it's a double-edged sword. It's obviously that is really, really important um, to prove that about new products. But at the same time, as a small company going through it, we were, we were during the process saying, okay, this is exactly why small companies don't do it because it is really <laughs> the long process. And um, it's expensive. So Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, do you, I'm assuming you have this device patented? Yes. Another grueling process, I'm sure. Yeah. And that, and that's what, something that's so important to us. Right? I think Greta said, you know, the FDA 510K for us, it's such, it's a moat for us. It's an asset for us. It's the same thing as the patents. And that's what makes us so different in the category. There's you know, we have the big guys, we have the big players, obviously. We also have the new entrants and there's a lot of private labeling in the category, a lot of marketing. And so we really wanted to differentiate ourselves right all the way through. Our story is is new and differentiated. And the reason we're doing this is because we're athletes, but all the way through we're we're backing up the, the new design with patents. We're backing up that new design with the safety testing and the clearance from the FDA. And, and, you know, making sure we're doing everything right, even down yeah. to being in every piece of our supply chain, right? Being there at the <laughs> cotton bar, being there at the fiber supplier, right? Like we want to do everything the right way.
Yeah. You know, it reminds me of years ago, they had an advertisement and it's always been sort of an example that um, people use in marketing. You know, if this deodorant works for firefighters, it will work for you. <laughs> so I love that idea. If this tampon <laughs> works for elite athletes who went to the best universities and are in and out of the water and in, you know, high intensity activity all day, then, you know, as you said, okay. while I'm pushing my stroller or playing pickleball, it probably will be sufficient for my active needs as well. Right. Women are not running through fields of flowers for fun. In right white now. jumpsuits. Like, I always no, love those No, we're not doing that. We're like fighting for equal pay in sports and winning the US Open and we're friggin' equal parity at the Olympics. This was the first year that there were equal female and male representation at the Olympics. Like we're doing, Ooh. we're doing big things or we don't have time to run through the field. Yeah. Of Interesting, fun fact. Well, you know, from my world of gynecology, I will say that some athletes go through great means to avoid their period altogether mm -hmm. because there have not been uh, tampons of this nature. I mean, you know, women are having hormone uh, treatments to avoid their period or continuous birth control pills or IUDs or whatnot, uh, if allowable, of course. Um, I'm curious how you're doing, and, and Rachel will certainly follow up with this, in terms of like funding or partnering with other companies uh, to really get off the ground. Do you, can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, I mean, partnerships for us is, it's so critical because we are such a new brand and we're so lucky to be able to partner with Athleta in Paris and then also announce some really cool sports partnerships lately that we have. Uh, we are the official tampon of the USL Super League. It's the newest women's professional soccer league in the U.S. And, and that means these professional soccer athletes now get access to tampons in their locker rooms and not just any tampons. They get access to tampons that were designed by women like them. Um, and so we're really proud of these partnerships. We're really proud of our smaller partnerships too. We work with a bunch of luxury fitness studios in the New York City area and in LA. Uh, and, and we're equally as proud of, of those partnerships because that represents another type of, of person that we can reach. Um, and funding wise, uh, we've also been very lucky to be able to raise significant venture funding. I think women's health is, a, is an area that is historically underfunded. And so we've been lucky to have incredible partners like Mar Hershenson at Pear, who is a trailblazing woman in VC. People that have had the same problems that we have had heard us pitch and we're like, how could I not back this solution? So and do you obviously it's been a very difficult fundraising environment, certainly for the past couple of years. Did you find, and you know, to the extent that you can disclose, I know some of them are public. Did you uh, are, do you have celebrity athlete investors? Because that seems to be a big trend. Whether they're starting their own brands or investing in others, you know, to have a, you know, a Serena Williams fill in the blank, whoever is the <laughs> Serena Williams lacrosse equivalent, or. Uh, I, I'm laughing because I know this is not life saving, but I just happened to see an ad on Hulu for a new how the behind the scenes of Baywatch. So I know oh that's not my same thing. <laughs> we <laughs> but you know, potential we're just, endorsement uh, opportunity. <laughs> yeah, we're just kind of kicking off our athlete partnerships right now. And I think the most important thing for that is that these athletes actually use the product. They like the product and they want to authentically speak about it. So we've been working with our, I mean, our first kind of formal athlete partnership. So exciting. We've been working with an amazing beach volleyball player that we went to Stanford with. Her name is Charlie Ekstrom. She got a wild card entry into the Manhattan Beach Open, which is a huge deal. And she's repping sequel on her kind of like on the beach bikini top kit. Um, and it's really cool to see athletes that are ready to add a tampon company to their roster of sponsors. I think that's something that, you know, we we feel like we can pioneer. We can we can kick that off and be really again differentiated. Yeah, I mean, being the official tampon of anything is a new <laughs> idea. Uh, yeah, I mean, not <laughs> like the official car, the official credit card of the of the U.S. Olympic team. It's it's pretty amazing as someone who's been on the business side. Um, of this space for such a long time, 
I, I really do want to emphasize that point that the fact that people are willing to put their names on yeah. tampons and say, I support this. And again, I love how you guys go right to the, the most extreme. You go to the Olympics. I don't think they're smaller uniforms that are made than the bottom of a bikini of that a volley beach volleyball player plays in. So the idea, you know, the fact that she's an elite athlete and that there's very little protecting her from having that red line moment is really, really creative. I like it a lot. Yeah. I mean, those are small. exactly, Oh yeah. Those, those are exactly the partners that we want to have, you know, like to yeah. your point, your client, um, your patient saying, you know, can I swim with a tampon? Like we want to work with swimmers. We want to work with surfers. We want to work with people. We want to work with first responders and lifeguards and yeah. people that, you know, you can look at your Instagram and say, well, they're swimming with their tampon in and, and they feel great enough to, you know, run on the beach. I can do that too. Yeah. What else is coming down your pipeline if you're at liberty to discuss? I mean, this really can tentacle out into so many different uh, areas, especially with athletes in mind. We have some really cool partnerships that we're going to announce soon. Athlete partnerships, some um, like league and, and some more like team partnerships. We're very excited about those and, and we're excited to just keep building in that way. Again, we think partnerships is is the way that we're going to have the most impact and having athletes get this product through their leagues, through like having it be a benefit. I think that's really exciting to us. Um, so we're going to announce a couple in the next few weeks. Awesome. That's amazing. We, we will surely be on the lookout. <laughs> amazing. Really, really exciting. Well, congratulations. Uh, I'm sure like everything else you two take on, you make it look easy. We know it's not. Uh, but we're really excited to see the impact that this product will have. And you'll know at the moment the big guys take notice, <laughs> if they haven't already, or the big gals, um, because uh, that's when they start knocking on the door. So moving way ahead, seems like there'd be great opportunities for acquisitions and uh, the future is really bright for Sequel. So we're we're following you and 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 cheering you on every step of the way. Thank you guys. It was so nice to so nice to have this conversation and appreciate it. Don't forget, subscribe to our podcast at businessofthev.com for the latest trends and trendsetters in women's health and business.